West Country Wanderings and welcome to another one in my railway series. Today I'm in the city of Oxford. I'm not here to visit the city of Oxford. This is normally the easternmost extremity on my channel West Country Wanderings. But today for this purpose of this video I'm making a bit of an exception. I'm going to be joining this train shortly. And this is a train that goes from Oxford to London Marylebone. It's the Chiltern Railways and that's a service or railway come that I don't normally travel on. I'm normally on the GWR territory, occasional phrase into West Midlands and cross country. The reason we're on this one today is because we're going to have a look at the Bicester Military Railway. So we're taking the train out to Bicester. Now Bicester is a town I used to work in. So I'll show you where I used to work there, tell you about that as well. And hopefully we'll be able to have a little tour of this Cotswold town here, which lies in the eastern extremity of the Cotswold region. The reason this video has come up today is just over a week ago, I did a, one of my Cotswold walks. I went to the village of Charbury, which is on the Cotswold line, which heads north and then towards the west of here of Oxford. And when I joined the course of that walk, Suddenly Oxford, Oxfordshire came into my head, of course, Charlbury is in Oxfordshire, and I thought, this to military railway, perhaps my people might be interested in this video, or this railway, should I say. And indeed, you replied in the comments to that video in great numbers. A lot of you are interested in this railway. I've no idea what we're going to see today, so why not join me on this journey here on West Country Wanderings, looking for the Bicester Military Railway. So we're now at Bicester Village. Bicester actually has two railway stations. There's quite a story to this one. It closed in the 1960s, reopened towards the end of the 1980s as Bicester Town. At that time it was served by various different companies including later First Great Western and Great Western Railway. The line was then extended north out of Bicester and then it rejoins a loop back down to the main line which runs between Banbury and London Marylebone. That opened, I think it was about 10 years now. So if you go to Oxford, you have an alternative. You can either go GWR to Paddington or Chiltern Railways to Marylebone. Now you're probably thinking, why is this railway station called Bicester Village if Bicester is a town? Well, when it reopened and was branded by Chiltern Railways, they sought a marketing advantage because right next to Bicester Town Centre is Bicester Village, which is a fashion outlet centre. So it's like a retail park just on the outskirts of the town. And this out of the two stations that serve Bicester is the nearest one which serves the fashion outlet. So when the railway station was rebuilt here, and I put in the exact date it was opened, they decided to have two exits or two entrances and two exits. Now the one I'm walking to is the exit which takes you right into Vista Village. Now it's full of uh, fashion types, young people that are interested in fashion, so it's probably not a place where I'm going to be doing here on West Country Wanderings. But if you're interested in that sort of thing, you'll see that it says Vista Village there. And there is an exit which takes you right into the heart of the fashion centre, which is just down here on the right. But we're not going that way. <laughs> we're going to go, first of all, into the town centre. Do a little bit around there first, because I'm going to get a cold drink before I start off on the walk today. It's about 13 kilometres. quite a hot day. I'm going to take it leisurely, though. It is flat. should be good to rain today. And we'll then see what we can see of the uh, military railway. I, say, I was about to say former, but it's definitely not former. It's still open and in use. So we're going to head now down through those gates that way. So we're starting to come into the town centre now. It's, uh, it's only five, five, six minutes walk from the edge of the, the town here. And... Uh, 
Yes, bring back in memories. Now, I actually worked in retail. In fact, I was a store manager here in Bicester. Now, the main road I worked in is called Sheep Street, probably enough, because we're on the edge of the Cotswolds. Well, Cotswolds Strait, Chilton's here. And it's just down there. I'm just going to have a wander down there and grab something to drink, and then we'll make start our route looking for what we can see of the Bicester Military Railway. And I see that branch of Iceland. That will get a bit bit closer if we can. That was where I worked. It wasn't Iceland then. Oh no, it was a branch of a well-known high street chain. So there we have the famous sheep in Sheep Street here. Yes, and that uh, branch of Iceland was indeed a former branch of Woolworths. Yes, I worked for Woolworths from 1995 to 2002. I started off as a trainee assistant manager in Penzance. I became store manager of Woolworths in St Ives, I did that for about five years and then I was promoted to this store. This was one of the biggest stores in the region. Um, it was in the western region, uh, this store, uh, also in the Thames Valley district and it had a, quite a big sizeable turnover. And one of the problems we had well, when I took over was recruitment because the Bista village hadn't long opened and they were actually paying more per hour than what Woolworths were paying, or indeed all of the other stores along this uh, lovely Sheep Street here in Bista. Yeah, it hasn't changed much from what I remember it, to be honest. Still a pedestrianised street here in Sheep Street. A uh, few of the shops have changed, but generally not that much. It's good to see that despite the uh, Bista village being right next door, there tends to be the local people from Oxfordshire that shops here rather than the people checking up from London that uh, shop here in the centre of town. Uh, so Bista village itself, the outlet, is uh, a very, very different place to this indeed. This is the back of the former Woolworths store. Now, of course, Iceland. I remember getting in deliveries going into there from Swindon Distribution Centre. So we've now made our way back to the railway. And this level crossing is actually called Bicester London Road. There's quite a bit to tell you about the railway while we're here. And I do believe before it was called Bicester Town, when it closed, before it closed in the 1960s, the station was actually called Bicester London Road. So we're crossing over this now. Quite a busy line now. And uh, double track was single, single track when I was last here. That there is Bicester Village Station, where we started our journey earlier today. Sorry if it's wobbly and I do apologise for the, uh, the soundtrack today because we are close to roads for quite a bit of our explore but uh, I have done a bit of cl well, I've got my microphone, my uh, Lavalier on, fluffy Lavalier to try and get a bit closer to cut down on some of the traffic noise. I'm heading to a village called Ambrosden which is about two, two and a half kilometres outside of the town. I will put up a map. I am doing a circular walk today our first destination is the level crossing in Ambrosden. And before we get to Ambrosden, we should be walking parallel to the outside perimeter fence of the Bicester Ordnance Depot. And shortly after that, I'll stop, put my tripod up and do a bit of piece to camera properly to tell you more about the history of this fascinating railway here in Bicester in Oxfordshire. The former military site here Part of it, this is Graven Hill by the way, I put a map up now, the hill itself is beyond there. They've MOD have sold off some of the land here for new development, there's some new apartments there. And the actual site there, so just beyond that, there was some former warehousing which was connected to the Bista Military Railway. There's no sign of the railway at this point, so we're going to continue our journey. But this is location number one, Graven Hill. Apologies for the uh, traffic noise, it is really, really loud here, but this fence here is the perimeter of the Vista Ordnance Depot and that's of course where the railway lies have put up green sheeting as well to make it really difficult to see. I can't see any railway 
bits and pieces in there at the moment, but I'm hoping to, we can see a bit of it when we get to Ambrosden. I am keeping my eyes peeled though. <laughs> That's not great, but you should be able to make out the trees in the distance through the green slatting there. That is Graven Hill itself, and this was the former MOD site. At this point, this part of it, as I say, has been sold off, but a lot of it is still in use. There's a gap in the fence there. I'll have to put it in manual focus a minute. Uh, spider web in the web. Uh, there we go. I think that's in focus now. You just see that there. That's Graven Hill. Uh, that's a better view of it. That's as I can get. But as I say, there's no railway at this point anymore. So, but hopefully there should be another part. So that would have been one of the main entrances into this uh, Ordnance Depot there with Graven Hill in the background. There we have some rails. So if I can get a bit closer. Obviously the perimeter fences there, I can't film beyond that because I'll be arrested under the Official Secrets Act. So this is a Bister site here. And obviously this is part of the railway that is no longer used. But the railway is still extant. And the railway to the Graven Hill site went along there between those two willow trees. But you can see the tracks clearly here in the road. They're there. And then they went through that gate there across to that site there, but uh, that's the main entrance there to Bister. So there's our turning to Ambrosden. You can see the sign there, MOD Bister, all HGVs go straight on. Again, once again, I do apologise for the road noise because I know road traffic is really distracting and very loud. But I'm doing my best with the sound to mute that as much as possible to being close might. So yeah, so Ambrosden is one mile down to the right. So we're going down there. And when it gets a bit quieter, I'll give you some more information about the railway. It's been a bit too noisy. I can't even think straight at the moment with this traffic. Well, that's a bit of a blessing. This road to Ambrosden is currently closed to traffic, but not pedestrians. Another good reason why I came here on the train and not the car. In fact, it would be impossible to have filmed anything what I've filmed so far from a car, because there's nowhere to park by the side of that busy road. And if you're wondering why the roads around Bistra are so busy, I seem to remember they were pretty busy. I think they got a lot busier though. It's because, oh, there we go, we've got a road to ourselves. I'll just show you that. It's a rare thing, isn't it? A rare thing. There. <laughs> An empty road. You don't see that too often here. Um, yeah, the, uh, unfortunately, or well, fortunately, depending, I mean, it's good for employment. Bistra is quite close to the M40. And uh, because of that, a lot of distribution centres have sprung up in this area. Uh, just seen an Ocado, O-C-A-D-O, -O, I think that's how you pronounce it. One of those food online retailers. Ocado Warehouse just next to that busy road. But here, we're coming into some lovely Oxfordshire countryside now. It's more the sort of thing you see on West Country Wanderings, not busy towns. But yeah, so I'm starting to calm down. I was. I felt okay in Bicester actually in terms of anxiety because I suppose I'm fam quite familiar with the town and it really hasn't changed very much the town centre glad to report and the people there are very friendly there was a couple of pedestrians that were walked in front of the camera I was filming and they're like oh sorry excuse me <laughs> very apologetic uh, I doubt if you'd get that in London or anywhere indeed many other places and uh, lady showed me the way because I couldn't remember how to get back to the high street from around the back of where Woolworths was showed me through this little cut through alleyway next to a social club where they were, I think I had football on or something because it's a Saturday afternoon here in July. So yeah Ambrosden is home to Bister Army Garrison. There used to be an RAF Bister as well which was also rail connected although Nothing like the extensive uh, railway I'm about to describe to you, but it uh, is still here. It's like stand here in Bicester. So I have to be careful filming here because of uh, what we've got, <laughs> obviously with the military. So I'm going to switch it off now. But uh, yeah, so home to Bicester Garrison. Just a tractor whizzing through now. Village Batar level crossing is just down here. In fact. The Church of St Mary's Ambrosden is just in there. It's away from the garrison bits now, just down here is the level crossing. This is the level crossing in Ambrosden and it carries the Bister Military Railway across it. This is absolutely fantastic to be here. 
I was expecting big gates and I'm not sure this section of the military railway is still used. We'll go and have a look. You can tell by the shine on the rails. Ah, now that is interesting. Those rails are still pretty shiny. So yeah, not only uh, that's Bista Military Railway there, um, not only is it uh, shiny on rails, it's ballasted too. So that railway is still very much in use. And that's what the other side of it looks like here. There we go. Could even be a plate layers hut there. So to the left here, and I'm gonna have to check my map in a bit. I'm gonna go to the churchyard and sit down have some water. And then we can see what we can see of this. To the left, I think, so it's Merton Road, Ambrose and Crossing. I think that takes us back to Gravenhill. Now, a lot of Gravenhill site has been sold off by the MOD, but this level crossing is very much in use. Now, I think to the right is where it joins the Oxford to Bicester railway line. And we went through that and I'm going to insert some footage round about now. I'll insert some footage round about now that I took on the train as we were approaching Bicester. It's called Brister East Depot and Brister West Depot, and they're the two junctions where this branch line meets the main line between Bister and Oxford and connects the military railway to the rest of the railway network. set of gates and you can see they're not exactly usual British rail type of gates they are metal they are all metal gates here with really heavily engineered hinges there and posts fantastic surprise the gate here is open as well I was expecting great big fences to stop people traveling onto the track because if it's obviously it's a military installation I'm trying to get off the road we've got the busy road behind me going through Ambrosden but yeah Wonderful Ambrosden level crossing on the Bista Military Railway. Anyway, so if I can find a seat, sit down, grab some water and tell you some more about this fascinating railway here in Oxfordshire. This is the rather lovely St Mary's Church, Parish Church here in Ambrosden. In the centre of this army garrison, but well, there's other housing here as well, not just army, but uh, a lot of it's made up of uh, army personnel. So if I can find somewhere to sit to tell you some more about the railway. Now the Bistra Military Railway is entirely run and owned by the Ministry of Defence, which is why information on it is rather scarce. Before I continue, there is a book, and I'll put the details below, which I believe was published in around 1992 by the Oxford University Press. I can't remember the name of the gentleman's name that wrote it. I think it's Roger, but I could probably got that wrong. So I'll put it in below. It may in entirely be out of print now but you'll probably be able to pick it up um, places like the bookshops that they have like at the GWR radio uh, GWR railway uh, between Cheltenham and Broadway they've got a couple of bookshops there one at Toddington Severn Valley Railway and the West Somerset Railway all in my region and indeed the Bodmin Steam Railway in Cornwall they all have bookshops and you may be able to pick it up from there or online. Mr Military Railway serves or rather serve and I'll come on to that in a minute three MOD depot sites, one at Piddington, one at Arncott and one at Graven Hill. Now the one at Graven Hill, a lot of the land has now been sold off by the Ministry of Defence and it's gone into housing development and also industrial uses like distribution warehouses. So there isn't much to see in terms of a railway connection at Graven Hill anymore, alas. Graven Hill was connected to the main Bicester to Oxford line with the level crossing you saw here in the village of Ambrosden. It also connects up to the other two depots here around the Bicester area at Arncott and Piddington. Piddington lies a bit further to the southwest of the town, a little bit too far for me to walk today on a very hot today uh, day, but we're going to go on to closer to the village of Arncott and then we're going to follow the permanent way and I think there are two or three pieces where the footpath, the public right-of-way, crosses over the military line so we can see what we can see from those points too. 
Now the Bista Military Railway was built in 1942 entirely within the confines of the Bista Ordnance Depot. And one of the reasons of this, of course, was World War II. In fact, the depot here was extensively used on the run-up to D-Day. There was like 7,500 wagons moved each day in preparation for that evasion on the uh, or defensive positions on the beaches of Normandy, which was a key turning point for World War II. Bista Military Railway has some 40 miles of standard gauge track still in use as far as I can ascertain. <laughs> it's incredible, isn't it? 40 miles of standard gauge track just outside this Oxfordshire town of uh, Bista. You wouldn't think it because obviously a lot of it is hidden behind uh, some of that fencing, like the green slatted fence. And so it's really difficult to see what goes on behind the scenes here. And obviously a lot of it comes under the, the Official Secrets Act as well. Now, Bista Military Railway is also home to 275 Military Railway Squadron. And a lot of the personnel that work on that squadron are actually recruited from within the railway industry. They are all highly skilled railway people. They can drive trains, they can become plate layers laying permanent way, they are signalmen, they know the railway inside out because they have learnt it or their skills from the present day, like Network Rail, Great Western Railway, Chiltern Railways that I was travelling on earlier today to give you a handle on that. And obviously they need to do that. And it can be used obviously in a wartime situation as well. Now be, may be surprised to know that the Ballista Military Railway had a number of internal railway stations. I can't remember them all, I'll have them listed. So excuse me while I glance down to read out the list. It's, there, there's, there was quite a few. Uh, there was one at Langford Farm Halt. In fact, I think we walked past Langford Farm on the way here into the village of Ambrosden. There was one called E2 Platform. I think that was because there was a giant warehouse house called E2 and it served the personnel that worked in that warehouse within the uh, military establishment. There was Westercott Platform, D6 Platform, Queen's Hill Platform, and of course, Graven Hill, which is perhaps the biggest site of them all. And it's the only part, I'm not sure whether the Graven Hill station is still in use because from when I got my sources from, for, for making this video, it was still in use at the time, but of course, more of the land has now been sold off by the MOD for the aforementioned development. So that may no longer be the case. And unfortunately, I've not been able to find any photographs of those stations as well. But if you pick up that book, i saved by the OUP, and the gentleman's name, I'll drop it in again, and I'll put the ISBN number for the book as well in the description of this video. You may be able to find some photographs inside the pages of that book. Now there's still a purpose-built two-road carriage shed for repair of the own MOD vehicles because they have their own locomotives, their own wagons for the purposes of moving ordnance and supplies and stock for within the army network. Now the original railway centre controlling this vast network of uh, military while we're here at Bicester was at Arncote, but in 1978 they was actually moved to Piddington for a brand new centre, well at that time now, so that's some four, four, 44 years old now. But as far as I can ascertain, the site is still at Piddington. The whole of the site here at Bicester is now known as DSDC Bicester, Defence Storage and Distribution Centre Bicester. So I'm now on the edge of the village of Arncott and this is the Arncott depot and as you can see the military railway here is very much in existence. That's military obviously the other side of the fence and excitingly we have a military signal box here. Oh, I, can't, I can't believe it. this is absolutely fantastic. So yeah I'm just going up to that now and it is just called Arncott signal box. Oh wow. <laughs> Arncott signal box also has a level crossing, so we'll go and have a look. Oh, this is terrific. It's got a sign here, I will take a photograph of that. Uh, the Birster Garrison Ministry Lands Bylaws 1977. And obviously that's control of road traffic. So this is uh, one of Arncott's many level crossings here. It's on a very quiet road. That's in the direction of Ambrosden which is where we saw the first level crossing, or the first complete level crossing, not that one, at uh, Graven Hill. And the, the military railway, and as you see, it's, it's well used. That is very, very shiny metal rails here. Continues through this military gate, installation gate here at Arncott. 
down through there and you can see actually somebody in the grounds of the uh, the yard down there as well but that's uh, the Arncott signal box there as well so I'm sorry I can't get any closer than that but you can see at this point the line divides three ways after this level crossing the mid road doesn't look like it's much used but it certainly diverges left and right and I'll now include the OS map so you can get your bearings with that too. I'm going to head now back into Arncott itself to see what we can see in the rest of this village here in Oxfordshire. So this is the Arncott site it has a perimeter railway running right close to the water fence there. You can see the old telegraph poles there as well and it comes up to a level crossing here through the fence. Hopefully it will focus shortly. There it is, as close as I can get, but that's the site, the railway running round Arncott. Now this first level crossing the light on this is no longer in use, this bit's been taken out of use here. But the second one looks like it still is. Um, so the railway, the rails are still in the road here. Would have gone through that fence there. But something well worth doing the walk on a hot day for here. That must be the remains of Arncott's station. Remember I said when I was talking in the churchyard about the former stations on the military railway and that's the platform for Arncott station here on the Bicester military railway. That's absolutely fantastic. Didn't think I was going to see that. Wonderful. now left Arncott. In fact I've walked probably about four or five kilometres. In fact just to let you know the complete route today to include the Bister Military Railway is some 14 and a half kilometres although thankfully it's a lot level. In fact it's pretty much level all the way uh, and, not, uh, and not at all like the uh, seven-way walk I did the other day between Casusa and Newtown which was 1,100 metres, I think it was inclined, but uh, it's pretty much flat here today. It's just that it's very, very hot. I've decided to stop here. I'm on a farm track, or just off a farm track. It's private woodland behind me. I can't go in there. Sorry, but it looks really nice. I'd love to just get some shade, but there's no shade here, sadly. Um, I'm about 2K off the edge of Bicester Town Centre. What we should see in a minute, there should be a footbridge that goes over, or maybe a track bridge, a farm bridge, that goes over the main... Chilton railway line between Oxford, Oxford Parkway, which is just before uh, Bicester Village Station. And it's at that point that you get the uh, Bicester Depot north and south, which is where the military railway line leaves the main line. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to get some shots of that before I conclude the video today. I couldn't do face-to-face -face pieces to camera on lots of the route today, probably wondering why it's just been commentary. Well, because he would make me suspicious if I was using my Joby stick with my big fluffy microphone. So because of the nature of today's uh, video, I've had to do it more clandestine. I've just had my little fluffy mic and just having my um, small lens on the front. I couldn't have a telephoto to get through the uh, fences. It would just have drawn too much attention myself. I have been very careful with what I filmed. I haven't included anything of the following. I haven't included any personnel that I've seen. I haven't included any car registration number plates. And most important of all, I haven't included anything that I've seen beyond the fences, including lots of the military hardware which are on the fences. I won't describe what I've seen, uh, that wouldn't be appropriate. Uh, I mean obviously if you're walking it yourself you'll see it but I certainly wouldn't be including that. Only thing I've included today is purely just focused on what you can see of the track of the Bicester Military Railway. Anyway I hope you're enjoying the walk today. I'm gonna have some water. I'm really really hot. I'll see you in a bit when we can get to that. Uh, it's either a footbridge or a road bridge or something uh, according to the ice map where we should be able to see the main line and where the military railway diverges. So we're not far from that promised overbridge. Just wanted to show you this. I'll just move out of the way. You can see that over there, there, somewhere around there. There is, well, it's to do with, it's gravel extraction, basically. 
And it's just to say that that connection to the mainland, when I said about depot junctions north and south, just to the south of Bista Village Railway Station, isn't the only use for the line at that point because the military railway branches off a little bit further away after it crosses over the bits where there is a gravel extraction depot, which is also railway served. Now, a bit of bad news, I'm afraid. There used to be a foot crossing at point, this point called Langford Lane from crossing. Interesting to note, it says Oxford Bletchley. And it says that for a very good reason. And I'll explain about that shortly. The area is controlled by Marleybone North Workstation, which is interesting as well. So Oxford to the left, Bletchley to the right. And it's just to the right of this point is where the lines, but for the depot, but for the gravel depot line, the Bristol Military Railway. I'm sorry I can't show you anything further at this point because I'm going to have to make my way backtrack a bit to get to there. But I think the reason they've closed this is because this line speed now is 100 miles an hour and it'd probably be dangerous to have line speed 100 with a foot crossing at here because this is a very busy line. That's looking in the direction of Marlebone. And you have that signal which has three indicator panels on it, one to the left, or kind of um, northwest direction, kind of a northeast direction, and round to the right. Well, the one that goes round to the right is the one that links up with the track that comes through Bister Village, heading down from Banbury direction and uh, Birmingham, and that then curves south towards Hellsbury and Marlebone, Marlebone, should I say. The one in the centre is the one of interest because that line continues on. In fact, it continued on, should I say, all the way through a place called Steeple Claydon, Winslow, right through to Milton Cleans, in fact, to Bletchley. Now, at Bletchley, they're currently building a flyover to reopen this line all the way from Oxford to Cambridge again. It's called the Varsity Line also known as the East-West Link. It is seen as a key driver of business and economic growth in the kind of northwestern quadrant of the southeast economic region, if you like. So it, again, it closed in the 1960s, like all of these lines. The, the line, as far as I know, is still in existence. I'm just looking at the OS map now, all the way through to Milton Keynes. Um, and it just it is just marked disuse. I believe it's overgrown in sections, but I think some of the line and the track is there. If anybody knows the update on the situation with the East-West Link and how far they're getting on with reconnecting the university cities of Oxford and Cambridge once more, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. So that turn out there on the track on the left hand side of the screen, so you've got the signal on the right, red signal on the right, you've got the track which is to the right of the screen which is the track that generally speaking heads to Marlborough, although there is bi-directional working on the railway here. To the right of the you've got the track that heads down to Oxford and then there's a track that spurs off to the left. It then meets a head shunt and then it meets two other lines going down. Now one of those is for the Bister Military Railway and then it runs parallel the Bister Military Railway as I say for approximately half a kilometre before verging off left of the screen and it follows those conifers that we saw in earlier in today's video. I'll hand you over from Bicester Village now, back to where I was south of Bicester to close today's video off. So we finally found an overbridge. And that's the main Chiltern line between Oxford and Marlborough. That is in the direction of Oxford. It's about 10 miles south, uh, south southwest from this point here. There is a network rail access point there and a crossing for them, but that's obviously locked off. New bridge here. This is the new bridge 
Uh, and you see this new culvert here, this was put in when Bicester Village and the whole linking up with Marlebone and Oxford was done, I think it was 10 or 15 years ago now, I'll drop in the exact date of that below. So that's Craven Hill there on the horizon, on the right of the screen. And you're now looking in the direction of Bicester Village. And that is the track that takes you back to Bicester Village Station, about one and a half miles to the north of here. So that's uh, Craven Hill Depot over there. You can make out some buildings there and that's part of the military establishment. It's the other side of that where the MOD site has been sold off. It's now going into housing. But back here, and it's just to the right, see those conifer trees again? That denotes the point at which the military line diverges off the main line turns right until if its first site, which is Craven Hill, it then makes its way through Ambrosden down to Arncott and finally to Pilkington. And that completes the circuit. I'm sorry you can't actually see the points where it joins up. It is a little bit restricted view. There is a wall here, if I can show you. So I can't stand directly on top of the bridge looking down, but I don't think I'd see that much more anyway because of those trees there. It's just blocking the view of the junction, sadly. But yeah, I think this bridge was built around 2010, something like that. I'll drop in the date of that below. One other thing to tell you before I go, I won't have time to give you the full details on it now, but it's worth bearing in mind that just the other side of the railway here was once the Roman town of Silchester. Yeah, can you believe that? A complete Roman town lying in the fields here, just a couple of miles south of the Cotswold town of Bicester, here in the northern parts of Oxfordshire. Well, that completes our story, sadly, at the Bicester Military Railway. I do apologise I wasn't able to show you more, but I think the highlights for me were those two things. It was the former railway station at Arncott, the military railway station. That's a rarity, isn't it? A, ra a platform belonging to a military railway still there. That was fantastic. And also in Arncott, the signal box. So it was certainly worth walking to the small hamlet or village of Arncott. And of course, the level crossing, complete with those really, really sturdy metal barrier gates. I've really enjoyed it today. It has been a little bit hot. I'm gonna make my way back into Bicester, get some supplies, something to drink, a little bit to eat before catching the train from Bicester Village back down to Oxford and thence Didcot and back into Gloucestershire. If you like my video today, please consider sharing it on your own social media. Perhaps you have people that you know that also are interested in railways. I really appreciate if you could do that. Also, perhaps a comment if you know anything more about this kind of secret railway. I've tried to limit what I have of filming today to obviously keep within the meaning of the Official Secrets Act. I will also include the description of that book and its ISBN number. I think it is now out of print, but that gives you information up to 1992 because that was when it was written. I'm afraid I don't have any more information after that date about this military railway here in Oxfordshire. Until next time on West Country Wanderings, take care of yourselves, look after yourselves, and I hope to see you on the channel again very, very soon. All the best for now. Take care. Bye-bye.